The world of 2021 is ruled by coffee, and Neo London goes crazy for it. They say that in this job, only two cases matter. The one that breaks you, and the one that makes you. Makes you a real cop. I'm Arthur Oliver, and I'm a private investigator. But I used to be a cop here in Neo London. I quit 10 years ago. I failed. I hoped I'd never come back here. I read about Richard Kersey's disappearance in the papers on a train journey. Coffee Tycoon vanishes. The front page headline of the Neo London Espresso screamed. For many, Kersey was a wealthy celebrity buffoon, pure envy. They lost contracts and profits to him. They even lost their reputations as he dragged competitors through the courts. And me? I lost a lot more to him. Catherine, my beloved, and his wife. Ten years ago, Richard was involved in a spot of bother. He had a debt. Unfortunately for him, it was Kath who received the demands for payment. Percy happened to be abroad at the time, totally out of reach. She got scared and tried sorting it out herself cash. She asked me for help. I couldn't do it in my official capacity, but I took my gun and set up a sting. It ended tragically. A few days ago, Henry called Richard's old brother. He sounded down, just like me. Okay, I know all about it, Arthur. You quit the force. You're still tormented by Kath's murder. Listen, Richard's daughter doesn't have to know anything about you two, nor Richard. But I'm begging you, help me find him. I'll give you a flat to live in, some cash, and a cover story that you're a salesman. Just come, please. So I'm in Neo London again. The business with Catherine broke me. So maybe the case with Richard will be the one to make me a real cop again. Richard's disappearance was big news. There was speculation about mafia involvement, either Italian or Yakuza. I think there might be something in that. Little Clarabelle, Richard and Kath's daughter. The last time I saw her was at her mother's funeral. I wanted to comfort her. Now it looks like it's her who wants to comfort me. She's so like her mother, especially her eyes. I can't forget watching the life draining out of Catherine's eyes. On the way to the hotel, Clarabelle told me her father might have been kidnapped by an angry competitor. It's a possibility. Percy did all sorts of weird deals with even weirder people. Maybe one of them had enough of Richard's caprices. Over the phone, Clarabelle confirmed what Henry had promised. There was a flat and a position as a salesperson in their family business. That was to make investigating easier. Fair enough. Let it be. If that's what the investigation demands, I'll become the best damn salesperson in Neo London. I'll help Clarabelle with her business. I'll find Richard. I'll find your killer, Kath. I won't let you down twice. Promise.
So, what do I have to deal with this week? Good morning, Mr. Van Haven. I'm Arthur Oliver, and I'm representing a new brand of coffee. We're called... Please don't go on. Let me speak. It's the new Kersey coffee brand. Am I right? Ha! <laughs> of course. I heard... I heard... Welcome to my humble little business, Mr. Oliver. How can I help you? Thank you. Can I just say, I think we can help each other, but all in good time. I'm here about the excellent range of Foxy Hills coffees. Is that your work? In a word, yes. <laughs> I buy coffee that I like myself, and it provides me with the cigars which I also like. An ideal arrangement, wouldn't you say? I would agree. If your premium range included our classic strong black coffee, espresso standard. At the right price, of course. After all, we wouldn't want you to go without good cigars. You've got me there. <laughs> cigars are my weakness, but it stays in the office. My wife, you know, she doesn't like the smell. But let's get back to the coffee. I interrupted you. Please go on. Nice photo. From your student days? Ha ha ha, yes. Being young is wonderful when the world is your oyster. You speak as if it's over. What? You mean I don't look like it? <laughs> you are a card, Mr. Oliver. Well, I do try to move a bit so as to not become totally desk bound. It shows. And the man next to you, isn't that Richard Kersey? The very same. He was my best friend at university and since. And these are our charming wives. Actually, our fiancés then. Catherine Seeger and Amanda Okote. You look a close bunch. We were, then. But life writes strange scenarios. The best of friends can fall out over the silliest things. And other people are worth forgetting. Yeah, I guess you're right. I keep the picture to remember the good times. Let's return to the here and now. Mr. Oliver, things are looking up. I heard you graduated from the London School of Economics. Ah, good times. Young, confident, sure of yourself. <laughs> it was tough at times, but what do you expect from the best academy in the country? We shared a room in the dorms with Richard. Soon after, I met Amanda, my wife. Richard's future wife introduced us. Then everything started falling into place. Obviously, only up till the Kersey's tragedy, which hit me and my wife hard. That's the past, though. There's nothing there for us now. Let's move on. Congratulations on the birth of your daughter. I hope both the mother and baby are doing well. 
Ah, thank you, thank you. Both in good health and so similar. I tell you, they look like sisters. It's amazing how a person passes on their genes and then watches as they live their own life. It seems you're enjoying your new role. Not at first, but it's getting better and better. Despite my super condition, <laughs> I'm not as young as I was and the little one demands so much attention, just like our business. Let's get down to it, shall we? We're new on the market, but we have a lot of experience in the field. We have a unique variety of coffee, trusted suppliers, and top quality equipment. We offer excellent quality at a good price. Miss Clarabelle has already dealt with us, and she's sure not to sell you a pup. That's great. Quality is my top priority, and that's what I taught Clarabelle, so... <laughs> It's a recommendation of sorts. And if we're talking about quality, my wife bought me a cigar not long ago. Came in a carved wooden box, well-known brand, and the aroma. Aromatic tobacco, like from the top drawer. Like, like it got chucked in there by accident? Precisely, it was filthy. After smoking it, I felt so nauseous, I spat it into the bin. I opened all the office windows and even had to use air freshener. So, it's best if we both assess the quality. It's hard to find these days. I used to be interested in the effect of different cultures on negotiations. In Japan, there is a need for distance. Don't even dare to look someone in the eye. It's even harder with the Swedes. They're so serious. Oh, this is a good one. Do you know the difference between an introvert Finn and an extrovert one? I really have no idea. The first, throughout the whole conversation, looks at his shoes. The second, looks at yours. <laughs> It's a good one, isn't it? Well, you can learn so much from visiting a client. But anyway, to get back to the aim of my visit, can we discuss the deal? But of course, I was rambling. But you have to admit, it's a fascinating aspect of business. Your proposal exceeds my current capabilities. I suggest we cut the delivery charges or just lower the product cost to compensate them. The price on the contract will then be lower by this percentage. That's a sensible concession and I really can't offer any more than that. That's a large concession, I admit. I'm a bit new to this. I'm only starting out in business, so your understanding is really valuable to me. 
Is it normal to ask for such large concessions? You have a lot more experience than me, so I need your help. Let me tell you what my method is. Please just relax. You're very open, which encourages trust. Maybe I was asking a bit too much. Please tell me about the deal. Once I'm familiar with it, it'll be easier for us to reach a compromise. Not to mince any words, advice like that shows a true businessman. Thank you very much. If we can turn to the product, it's an excellent coffee, ground to your specifications with every care taken to retain the aroma. And we're offering an exceptional price to our first partners. For similar quality, you'll pay much more anywhere else. Do you think so? The price seems high to me. Would you consider half the initial discount? You can see for yourself that choosing our product is a good decision. What's more important than a guarantee of satisfied clients? That's not everything I can offer you, though. I can slightly reduce the delivery charge by that much. I think that's a fair offer. Ha! For someone new to selling, you're a pretty good negotiator. I appreciate that, so I'll tell you what. Drop your price a little bit more, and we'll sign the contract, okay? Hmm. In that case, I can add a little more. Will this discount be enough? Okay, I agree. You worked me hard, but I think the prospects for collaboration look interesting. Let's sum up what we've established and sign the forms. I should sum up what happened after that meeting. Someone important lives here. That's what the Kersey homes seem to be saying. This is where the investigation begins. Walking in, Clarabelle hugged herself. From the cold, cute.
Clarabelle only slept here, though. After her mother's death, she was taken in by Joseph Van Haven, her father's friend, who treated her like his own daughter. His wife tried. Mostly, though, she left her to the housekeeper, Mrs. Fink. Why did the Van Havens raise the cursy kid? A friendly favor? Guilt. servant greeted Clarabelle with a stack of unopened letters. She stuffed them into her bag and went inside. A lot to catch up, I joked. And Clarabelle explained that she no longer lives in the residence with her beloved. I asked for a family photo of the Curses. It was an exotic-looking guy in the midst of a sea of pale Brits. Mr. Gabriel was an artist who taught Clarabelle to draw. He looked pretty stiff, probably trying to avoid her dreamy eyes. In the living room, among many works of art, a spot after a taken down painting drew my attention. It was a peculiar view. Clarabelle told me the painting belonged to her mother. One day, Richard simply packed it up and took it to Joseph. Did he want to sell it? Hide it. I didn't get a chance to ask. Clarabelle answered an urgent call, and apologizing, left in a hurry. I went to gather my thoughts. Catherine's death, Richard's disappearance, the unusual arrangements with the Van Havens, that picture. Clarabelle was right. A detective was needed here. But I have my own reason for this to get Catherine's killer. All in good time. The last lead is Richard's disappearance, perhaps the best-known coffee supplier in London. I'll start by entering into his world. That means turning into a businessman. My first customer will be Richard's old friend and Clarabelle's ward, Joseph Van Haven. Clarabelle gave me his address and phone number. He's an old, experienced trader. I'd better prepare thoroughly. Now I need to set the new clues and data on the board.
Van Haven's a good businessman. He welcomed me like an old friend and led me past the pictures. Clients were supposed to see signs of Joseph's education and worth. But me? I spotted a young, cocky Richard with my Catherine. She had no idea what she had coming. The other woman was Amanda Van Haven. It must have been through there being two young married couples at the same time that Richard and Joseph became such close buddies. Joseph watched as I examined the photos. He smiled, apparently at the memories. He'd played this scene out hundreds of times. He told the story of what a close bunch they were, until the girls fell out over a trifle. What trifle? It's not even worth mentioning, nor anyone else, he added. Was he talking about the third woman in the picture? It puzzled me. Catherine never mentioned a conflict with Joseph's wife, Amanda Van Haven. And I never asked. I was, hmm, too busy falling in love with Kat. What trifle broke their long-term friendship? I wanted to ask after the negotiations. The telephone interrupted us. The call was from George McFowl with an urgent matter. Joseph chuckled, another golden opportunity, and lifted the receiver. He pointed to his watch. It looked like it was going to be a long call. I nodded, gestured I'd give him a call, and left. It wasn't a good meeting. Van Haven kept talking right over me. On purpose? Or was he taking pity on me? Am I really that bad a salesperson? Regardless, he didn't tell me anything new about Richard's disappearance. At least he bought some coffee, though. One more thing was still troubling me. That missing painting from the Kersey's living room. Did its disappearance have anything to do with the case? And why did Richard take it to Joseph? Clarabelle might know the answers. I rang and asked her. She thought the painting was a memento from the founder of the family, Shillard Kersey, 18th century. Why did it get sent to Joseph? She didn't know. So back to Van Haven. I called, pretending to be the Kersey's lawyer. Mr. Van Haven, I've been instructed by Clarabelle Kersey to draw up an inventory of the family's works of art. He bought it, so I asked. If he still had Richard's painting, he muttered something about calling back and hung up. What? Joseph's reaction suggested the painting was a good lead. I need to check it out discreetly. I'm curious about the other blonde in the photo. Why did the jovial Van Haven avoid mentioning her? Perhaps I'd get to ask her soon myself. Case closed for today. Time to get my head round the supplies for the new contract. I need to check the investigation board. Now I need to set the new clues and data on the board.
You're hired. Welcome aboard. You're hired. Welcome aboard. This is a good lead, but the information may cost me a lot. I think that's all I've got for now. Let's see if there are any connections.
This one. So, what's going on in this company? This is a good lead, but the information may cost me a lot. This is a good lead, but the information may cost me a lot. So, what do I have to deal with this week?
So, what's going on in this game? information made possible. Another report. Hope there's some good news. This is a good lead, but the information Good morning, Mrs. Fink. Good day, Mr. Oliver. I am very grateful you found time to meet me today. Well, it wasn't easy. But I also have a fish to fry here. Excellent. Let's get down to brass tacks then. By all means. Mrs. Fink, is there anything you want to tell me about? A clue or a piece of evidence that might help crack the Cursey case? There is something. But the information will cost you. A lovely chat with Mrs. Fink shed a new light on the case and gave a good lead. Bad thing that Mrs. Fink overpriced her information. 
just like her own merits. Funny thing, it seems that this investigation will need me to make and spend a lot of money to get anywhere near the truth. Going bankrupt with the company means the end of the investigation. Where the hell is that sly dog Richard? Whose toe did he step on? Did he willingly abandon his daughter in Neo-London for good? Is it one of those cases where the truth is hidden and tangled in a decades-old web, spined by guilt, hate, money, and broken promises? or badly ended friendships. No matter the odds, even if it means talking to every damn coffee businessman in London, I'm going to find the truth. I'll find your husband, Kath. That's the first thing on my wish list. <laughs>